welcome to Blender Cinematic. I've been able to pull off complex destruction simulations in Blender using RBD Lab add-on and I also started uploading relevant tutorials on this channel. For basic tutorials on this add-on, please visit the RBD Lab official YouTube channel. And the most important uh, videos are Fracture Module, Physics Module, Mesh Visualization Options and the Constraints Module. If you'd like to purchase the RBD Lab add-on and support the channel at the same time, please use the affiliate link in the description below which allows us to receive a commission at no additional cost to you. Thank you. I took the building model from City Builder 3D add-on and prepared the building as per the workflow explained in my building destruction tutorials. I initially separated this part of the mesh where I want the explosion to happen and divided the mesh into windows, walls, floors, and the rest of the uh, mesh. So I have four target collections. The rest of the building mesh is selected and is made passive. And I added uh, fractures to each of these target collections and rigid bodies to each of these target collections so that they become part of the rigid body uh, simulation. And then for the power of the explosion, uh, we can either use force or we can use another rigid body. I just chose to use another rigid body. So here I used a sphere and this sphere was animated between one and 24 frames. So this sphere comes and hits the particular building and the rigid body for this sphere. I made this as a, a passive object. Uh, in this particular file, everything is converted to keyframes, so we're not able to see rigid bodies. But uh, once this rigid body is made passive and animated, it takes part in the simulation. Let's see how to do this using a simple file. Let's take the default cube. All right, and let's apply the scale. And let's add a sphere. And let's move it a little bit. And let's say this is the location of the sphere in the first frame. And let's say at frame 24, the location is right over here. And then let's keyframe the location. And let's ensure that the interpolation mode is set to linear. And this is the moment that we are interested in. And now let's make, let's um, add a standard scatter. And let's fracture and apply fracture. And let's add rigid bodies. Perfect. Now, there's no interaction between the sphere to the wall. Now let's add that interaction. The way we can add the interaction is by selecting the sphere and we can go to physics and add rigid body or in the add-on itself, there is an option called motion module. And here we can add a quick rigid body to the selected object. So let's set RBD and then set, select, set the type to passive. And then click on animated, which is the kinematic option in the add-on. So what this does is this sphere, when it is being animated, it will interact as a rigid body with this wall. So let's see. There we go. Now the wall started falling before the rigid body hits. So what do we do? Let's see at what keyframe the rigid body is making contact with the wall. So let's say at frame 18, at frame 18. So let's select the wall target collection and let's go to the rigid bodies, and there is this kinematic option. And then let's set kinematic, which means that this rigid body simulation will not start Oh, I forgot to click on update. And we have to click on update to update the simulation. There we go. So there's no interaction. Perfect. So now we want 
the wall to be part of rigid body simulation at frame Seventeen. So let's add a keyframe at frame 17 and click on update. There we go. So that's how we get the interaction between the sphere to the wall. And this is something similar that I've done in this building uh, explosion scene right here. So this sphere interacts with all of these meshes in the rigid body simulation. Now, once the rigid body simulation has been completed, I baked it to keyframes and then added uh, debris as per my tutorial, and then also added uh, smoke to these target collections. Uh, this procedure is explained in my tutorial series, the building destruction tutorial series, so please take a look. Now, in the smoke module, there is a slight change that I made in the flow emitter uh, tab the flow type is normally set to smoke, but I changed it to fire plus smoke so that when the initial impact happens, fire is generated and then along with it, the smoke is also generated, giving an explosion um, sort of a look. So that's the only change I made uh, in the flow emitter section. And also one more change that I did uh, was increase the sampling substeps because these chunks move at a very high velocity and that's the reason I increased the sampling substeps to 20 so that uh, the smoke is going to be continuous and it's not going to be discontinuous. Uh, the rest of the parameters are similar to my tutorial and the domain parameters are very much similar. And then I baked the Mantaflow smoke simulation and this is the uh, viewport render. And in render, I'm not rendering the sphere because I want it to look like the explosion coming from within the building. So that's the reason I switched off the render for the sphere. I hope this quick walkthrough helped to understand how to achieve simple explosion simulations using the RBD Lab add-on. In the future projects, I'll be working on combining uh, VDB Lab explosions into RBD Lab as well. And both of them are from RBD Lab Studio. Thank you and stay tuned.